Hey guys, it's Tim. Thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to be talking about using the gray card in a studio environment to set your flash exposure. gray card so that you could use it to not only set your white balance but to also set your flash exposure. When light meters first started coming onto the scene, what did you use to calibrate a light meter? You guessed it, a gray card. So a gray card is not only a fantastic tool for white balance, it is an amazing tool that you can use to set your flash exposure, especially for people that don't have a lot of money to go out and spend on a light meter. It's great for beginners. One of the biggest advantages that you have with a gray card is when you're outside and you're using shutter speeds that are over your sync speed. There are only one, maybe two light meters on the market that can measure high speed sync. But a gray card, that little $10 gray card, can do high speed sync exposure perfect every single time. When I'm in the studio, I like to set my camera up so that I'm killing all of my ambient light. And so the way that I do that is I set my camera up at 1 160th of a second shutter speed. Then I use my aperture at f5.6. And the reason I do that is because usually I'm shooting portraits and I like to have a nice depth of field for my subject. You don't have to shoot at f5.6, I'm just telling you where I start. So then I also start with my ISO at 100. So I got shutter speed 1 160th of a second. I've got my aperture to f5.6 and I've got my ISO at 1. So, in a studio environment, most of the time, that is going to kill all of your ambient light. Let's take a shot right here, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Right there. Nothing going on. It killed all the ambient. Nothing there. So, once I've done that, I know that all I need to do now is worry about my flash. You want to set up your brightness histogram so that it displays whenever your photo is taken so that you can look and you can figure out and center your gray card on your histogram. So I'm going to show you right quick here the photo I took just a moment ago. If you look, my brightness histogram right there has the line all the way to the left. That means everything is black. There's nothing being exposed. So your histogram works from left to right, from dark to bright. It measures the tone in your photo. You can use any color, but we use gray because we know where gray falls on the histogram. All the way to the left is black, all the way to the right is white, right in the middle is gray. And it's going to show up, and when it's exposed properly, it makes a nice little spike right down the center of your histogram. I'm going to show you, we're going to get it set up right now. Let's check it out. So if you look over my shoulder here, you'll see that I have my gray card set up. I've got it on a reflector holder. I'm going to pretend that that's where my subject is. Typically, you know, I'm going to have my subject hold that gray card right in front of their face. I want it right at the angle that I'm going to be shooting from so that I get the true reflective value off of the gray card that I'm going to be getting off of my subject. So, we've already talked about I set my camera to f5.6, shutter speed 1 160th of a second, and ISO 100. Where do I start on my flash? I'm glad you asked. Well, your flash typically has full power down to 1 128th power. And Right in the middle of that is 1 8th power. I always start my flash power at 1 8th power. And the reason I do that is because 1 8th power is exactly in the middle of my range. We're going to start that today. Like I said, I'm doing the 5D Mark IV. I'm starting at shutter speed 1 160th of a second, f5.6, ISO 100, starting my flash at 1 8th power. Now, I'm going to get up. We're going to take a picture of this gray card. The important thing when you do that is to make sure that the gray card fills the frame of your camera so that you're not getting other colors and other tones that are affecting the way that your histogram is displayed. Remember, gray is in the middle of your histogram, black is on the left, white is on the right, and all the other tones are in between. So if you just make sure that the only thing showing is the gray in your photo, you're not going to have to worry about other portions of the histogram having spikes in them. Take a picture right here. We're going to start at 1 8th power and let's see what happens. So I'm a Canon shooter and I look at my histogram here and I can see that 
my spike is over to the left a little bit, so it's showing that I am underexposed. Now, I've done this enough to know that, to me, that looks like it is about one and a third stops underexposed. And since I started at one eighth power, if I want to add one and a third stops to my power output, I'm going to bump my power up to one quarter plus 0.3. So I'm going to do that right quick. So I've taken my picture here, and if you look at my histogram, the right hand edge of my spike is pretty much perfectly in the center of my histogram which gives me absolute perfect exposure. And once you get to this point, you can adjust to taste based on your subject. But as you see right there, it took me two shots to do this. My first shot, I saw where I was. My second shot after I made my adjustment, boom, I am there and I'm ready to go. So as you see there, two shots and boom, my exposure is where it needs to be. So now I can put my subject instead of my gray card where I'm gonna be shooting and I can get a perfectly exposed photo of my subject. So, I've set up my cosmetology doll head. I think her name is Miss Kim or something like that. She's a fantastic model. She never asks for any food or never asks for anything to drink. She always does exactly what I need. The limit is she only has one look. But here, let's take a picture of her. Let's see what exposure looks like whenever it is done properly. And then we can wrap up our gray card session. And there you go. Perfect exposure, done with a gray card, two shots, real quick, real easy, not much to it at all. Hopefully this video has helped you understand the gray card method of getting flash exposure in the studio. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them as I am able. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Have a great day.